Hi, boys and girls. Today I've got a book for you, and it's called... Oh, wait, where's the book? Uh, wait, hold on. I'll be right back. Um, uh, uh, just, just, just wait for me. I'll be right back. Okay, wait. It's here somewhere. Let me see. Um, no. I, uh, where did I put that book? Is this the... Wait, let me see. I think... This is the book. Is this the book? No, this isn't the book. I'll be right back. Hold on. Uh, okay, let me see. Uh, oh, here it is. Here's the book. It. Ooh, this isn't a book, is it? Okay, wait. Hold on. Be patient with me. Ugh. Technology is so hard. Oh. Haha. -ha. I got it. This book is called Dear Juno. And it's written by So Young Pak. Illustrated by Susan Kathleen Hartung. Let's get into it. Now... When I read the title, Dear Juno, what does that make you think of? What do you think this book's going to be about? Take a look at the picture. What do you notice? Well, this is Juno. Juno and his grandmother live far away from each other, but they still find a way to stay close. Let's read to find out how they do this. And that's his grandmother. What do you notice that they're doing? Mm. Okay, I think you can see that picture. Juno watched as the red and white blinking lights soared across the night sky like shooting stars and waited as they disappeared into faraway places. Juno wondered where they came from. He wondered where they were going, and he wondered if any of the planes came from a little town near Seoul, where his grandmother lived, and where she ate persimmons every evening before bed. Juno looked at the letter that came that day. It was long and white and smudged. He saw the red and blue marks on the edges and knew the letter came from far away. His name and address were neatly printed on the front, so he knew the letter was for him. But best of all, the special stamp on the corner told Juno that the letter from his grandmother. Through the window, Juno could see his parents. He saw bubbles growing in the sink. He saw dirty dishes waiting to be washed. He knew he would have to wait for the cleaning to be done before his parents could read the letter to him. Juno seems to be waiting pretty patiently. Why do you think Juno has to wait for his mother and father to read the letter from his grandmother? Do you think it's because Juno can't read yet? Hmm. Maybe I can read the inside too, Juno said to his dog, Sam. Sam wagged his tail. Very carefully, Juno opened the envelope. Inside, he found a letter folded into a neat, small square.
He unfolded it, tucked inside were a picture and a dried flower. Juno looked at the letters and words he couldn't understand. He pulled out the photograph. It was a picture of his grandmother holding a cat. He pulled out the red and yellow flower. It felt light and gentle, like a dried leaf. Juno smiled. Come on, Sam, Juno said. Let's find mom and dad. Think about the letter Juno is holding. What is another reason why it might be difficult for Juno to read the letter from his grandmother? Look at that letter carefully. Is she writing the same way that we write? Grandma has a new cat, Juno said, as he handed the letter to his mother, and she's growing red and yellow flowers in her garden. How do you know she has a new cat? Juno's father asked. She wouldn't send me a picture of a strange cat, said Juno. I guess not, said Juno's father. How do you know the flower is from her garden? asked Juno's mother. She wouldn't send me a flower from someone else's garden, Juno answered. No, she wouldn't, said Juno's mother. Then Juno's mother read him the letter. And it said, Dear Juno, how are you? I have a new cat to keep me company. I named him Juno after you. He can't help me weed, but the rabbits no longer come to eat my flowers. Grandma. Just like you read it yourself, Juno's father said. I did read it, Juno said. Yes, you did, said his mother. At school, Juno showed his class his grandmother's picture and dried flower. His teacher even pinned the letter to the board. All day long, Juno kept peeking at the flower from his grandmother's garden. He didn't have a garden that grew flowers, but he had a swinging tree. Juno looked at the letter pinned to the board. Did his grandmother like getting letters too? Yes, Juno thought. She likes getting letters just like I do. So, Juno decided to write one. Hmm. How do you think Juno feels when he takes his grandmother's letter, picture, and flower to school? How do you think he feels? I bet he feels pretty good. Maybe even special. After school, Juno ran to his backyard. He picked a leaf from the swinging tree, the biggest leaf he could find. Juno found his mother, who was sitting at her desk. He showed her the leaf. I'm going to write a letter, he told her. I'm sure it will be a very nice letter, she answered, and gave him a big yellow envelope. Yes, it will, Juno said. And then he began to draw. First, he drew a picture of his mom and dad standing outside the house. Second, he drew a picture of Sam playing underneath his big swinging tree. Then, very carefully, Juno drew a picture of himself standing under an airplane in a starry nighttime sky. After he was finished, he placed everything in the envelope. Juno is drawing a lot of pictures. What do you think Juno is trying to tell his grandmother with his pictures?
Here's my letter, Juno announced proudly. You can read it if you want. Juno's father looked in the envelope. He pulled out the leaf. Only a big swinging tree could grow a leaf this big, he said. Juno's mother pulled out one of the drawings. What a fine picture, she said. It takes a good artist to say so much with a drawing. Juno's father patted Juno on the head. It's just like a real letter, he said. It is a real letter, Juno said. It certainly is, said his mother. Then they mailed the envelope and waited. Now take a look at this. There are no words on these two pages, but the illustrations tell you the story. Look carefully. What is happening? Grandma got Juno's letter. One day, a big envelope came. It was from Juno's grandmother. This time, Juno didn't wait at all. He opened the envelope right away. Inside, he found a box of colored pencils. He knew she wanted another letter. Next, he pulled out a picture of his grandmother. He noticed she was sitting with a cat and two kittens. He thought for a moment and laughed. Now, his grandmother would have to find a new name for her cat in Korea. Juno was a boy's name, not a girl's. Then he pulled out a small toy plane. Juno smiled. His grandmother was coming to visit. Maybe she'll bring her cat when she comes to visit, Juno said to Sam as he climbed into bed. Maybe you two will be friends. Soon, Juno was fast asleep. And when he dreamed that night, he dreamed about a faraway place, a village just outside Seoul, where his grandmother, whose gray hair sat on top of her head like a powdered donut, was sipping her morning tea. The cool air feels crisp against her cheek. Crisp enough to crackle, he dreams, like the golden leaves which cover the persimmon garden. And I think, there we go. There's Grandma sitting in the garden. Mm. I hope you enjoyed that story, and we're going to do a little writing activity in a moment. Now, before we start writing, I thought we should take a look at our world map, because in the book, Dear Juno, we've got more than one country that we're discussing. So if we go to North America... We know where the United States is. That's where we are. And we know Mexico. We've talked about Mexico before. But Juno's grandmother is not in the United States. She's very far away. And in fact, she's on a different continent. She's over here in Asia. And the country that she's in, she's in Korea. Now, Korea is on the same continent as some of the other countries that we've talked about, like, for instance, Vietnam and India. But 
in Korea, Juno's grandmother doesn't use English. She uses a different language called Korean. That's what she speaks. And if you go back to the video, you can even see in her letter that the words that she was writing, they look different than the words that we write. So we're going to do some writing. We're going to do it in English. And let me see if I can get... Yep. So now that we're going to do our writing, why don't you pause the video so you can go get your materials, writer's notebook, pencil, and a pen. And I'll wait right here. La, 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 la. Okay. You ready? The book that we're doing, I put it at the top, Dear Juno. So you can write that at the top so you remember which book we're writing about. And again, just like we've been doing, we're going to talk about the problem and the solution. Juno had a little bit of a problem because he wanted to write his grandmother a letter. But there was a problem. Do you remember? Hmm. But he figured out a way to solve the problem in the book. Now, I don't want to give too much away. I don't want to tell you what to write about, but I want you to think about what was Juno's problem when he decided to write the letter to Grandma? And then how did he solve the problem when he decided to write to his grandmother? And of course, let's see. Can I give you some words that might help you? Okay. What would be some good, good spelling words? Okay. I'm going to pick a color here. Today, I think I'm feeling... So, um, let's spell Juno. Oh, wait a minute. Juno's right at the top. I don't need to spell that for you. But for grandmother... Gra, gra, and... Gra, and... Mother. Ma. A. Th. 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 Er. It's a very long word, but if you break it into parts, gra and ma a th th er grandmother. Another word that might help you um, might be the country that grandmother's from, and that would be. Korea. Cor e a Korea. Let me think. What else could I spell for you that might help? Live. That's a good word. L iv. Um Wasn't he trying to write a letter? Let's do that one. L, E, T. And there's two T's. Let, T, R. So there's two parts to this word. It's let and T, R. But we just call it letter. So I think that's enough to get you started on your writing. Again, think about what problem Juno had, what's, how did he solve the problem. And then when you're done, you can add two pictures. Add one picture for the problem and one picture for the solution. And I think I forgot to work on my picture. So I'm going to stop the video and go work on my picture while you work on your writing and your picture. I'll be sure to post your work up in Class Dojo. And I can't wait to see what you did. Have a great day.